The road to success is sure to be a fulfilling journey, however slow in coming. We can be assured of reaching the goal line by making the right choices, moving rather than standing still. Let's do something each day that will take us closer to achieving our goals. Hi, I'm Theodore Henry and you're now tuned in to Jamaica Magazine. On the pages today, infrastructure and transportation, stimulating economic growth. Also, streamlining the entertainment industry to generate greater economic benefits. State Minister the Honorable Damian Crawford provides some answers to the issues. For all this and more, stay with us. JUTC. Take the ride. Enjoy the experience. The Jamaica Urban Transit Company, your route to excellence. The journey to economic prosperity is one that comes with modern infrastructure and services. The Ministry of Transport, Works and Housing is supporting the growth agenda through various development initiatives that are also creating jobs. Take a look. Jamaica is on a path to sustainable development and growth. And while the government is maintaining strict adherence to macroeconomic policy reforms to achieve this, other important strategic steps are underway in support of the growth agenda. For its part, the Ministry of Transport, Works and Housing is ensuring that there is adequate levels of infrastructure services to enhance economic growth and increase employment. For the most part, these are privately funded and come at little or no cost to the country's budget. It has been established worldwide that infrastructure development can contribute to economic growth by A, reducing the cost of production, B, contributing to the diversification of the economy, and C, raising the economic returns to labor. One of the major infrastructure projects set to spur growth is the privatization of the Kingston Container Terminal, the KCT. One of three pre-qualified bidders will soon take charge of that development. We expect, Mr. Speaker, by August to September, the provisional preferred bidder should be selected, followed by a contract award and signing in another two to three months. If all goes according to plan, the airport will be in private management by mid-year 2015. Business plans have been provided by two companies that expressed interest in a public-private partnership for the operation and management of the Jamaica Railway Corporation, the JRC. A third firm is to provide evidence of its ability to invest. In order to be prepared, we are simultaneously pursuing the privatization of the company as one. And at the same time, we are looking at the possibilities if there is if the only rational response is to, to, to break up the assets. The major infrastructure development program, MIDP, is helping to increase safety on the roadways by improving a number of important corridors. Corridors identified for improvement under the program include Nelson Ma the Mandela Highway, Hagley Park Road, and Marcus Garvey Drive. MIDP will be implemented over three years at a cost of 352 million US dollars, 300 million in loan financing from the China Exim Bank and the rest from the government. The work will be done by China Harbor Engineering Company, local contractors and through the Jamaica Emergency Employment Program, Jeep. Under the Jeep component, $4 billion Jamaican dollars is being spent this fiscal year, including $1.6 billion to employ 20,000 persons on various infrastructure projects. Other Jeep initiatives for the year include the construction of 1,200 wooden houses through Food for the Poor, and 300 jobs are being created through the Recycle Now Pet Bottle Recycling Project, which goes into full operation in July. It's expected to reclaim 35% of pet bottles on the market. 
Work is progressing apace on sections 1 and 3 of the North-South Highway project, promising better roads from Ferry to Linstead and from Monique to Ocherias by 2016. Section 2, from Linstead to Monique, should be opened to the public in August 2014. The benefit of the toll road, when completed, will far exceed the provision to commuters of a modern highway, thus reducing travel time. That is important, but that's not the real point. The potential benefits in terms of economic of activity line the exploitation of the lands along the highway for a range of developments. I'm appealing to our local entrepreneurs to come with ideas. Holding true to its commitment to use each dollar more efficiently, the Transport Ministry will be facilitating two major initiatives to reduce government spending in the 2014-2015 fiscal year. One involves exploring the use of concrete as an alternative road construction material. For future road construction activities, the bid documents prepared by the NWA will invite responses either for constructing, using asphalt or concrete. The second is an agreement for the National Works Agency to repair some parish council roads. The Minister of Local Government and I have agreed that as a matter of urgency, we will begin working on this matter. This collaboration will bring greater coordination in designing responses, technical specifications and procurement policies. Government's commitment to implementing an integrated transport system and modernizing and optimizing infrastructure services is unwavering. The Transport Authority will continue to implement a range of initiatives to improve service to the country's commuters. A road management information system will facilitate the autom automation of road inspection and will be implemented during this financial year. It will enable road inspectors to access real-time information on public passenger vehicles and operators on the road using a tablet computer. Increasing the fleet and maintenance capacity of the Jamaica Urban Transit Company, JUTC, remains a priority. Government is looking to boost the fleet to 565 buses by August. We commit to bring order and organization to the public transportation system, not just in the KMR, but island-wide. Our people deserve no less. Important policy changes are also happening through the Cabinet Infrastructure Subcommittee chaired by the Transport Minister. New operational procedures are speeding up the contract's approval process. We have taken a step which is costless in terms of additional expenditure. We have simply asked every ministry or every entity to list from the day you issued the RFP what exactly did you do, what has taken you this time. The Ministry of Transport, Works and Housing, pursuing cost-effective means to spur development and economic growth with job creation. The government is making it much easier for all of us to get quality health care at public health facilities. It's achieving that through a new GOJ health card, which will also improve the mechanism for health financing, data management, and service delivery to patients. It's a card for everyone, babies, elderly, and the ages in between. Let's find out more. The GOJ card is the first of its kind in the Caribbean and represents a major game changer in the public health sector in Jamaica. It's part of the solution for making the public health system more efficient, financially stable and affordable for everyone who needs care. Extensive public consultations on health financing prior to ruling out the GOJ health card revealed wide public consensus on the need to improve the process for dispensing medication and to increase the avenues for health financing. The collection of private health insurance was seen as one acceptable way to achieve these goals. The GOJ health card will assist us to accomplish these objectives. We will be using the coordination of benefits platform of the NHF to facilitate the collection of health insurance. The GOJ Health Card is now the primary means by which all Jamaicans will access care in public health facilities. 
Registration for persons to get their cards began on February 3, 2014. All residents of Jamaica are eligible to apply for a GOJ card once they have a TRN. To get the card, persons must fill out a simple form available at health facilities with information such as name, address and tax registration number TRN. Completed forms can be left at any public health facility, the Ministry of Health head office or the head office of the NHF and any NHF help desk across the island. Cards are delivered to the applicants by mail and that's two to three weeks after registration. In the case of young children, a TRN will be obtained for them to facilitate registration once they have a birth certificate. For persons who do not have a birth certificate, they will need to get a photo endorsed by a justice of the peace and a declaration of their birth date. Once these are obtained, a provisional TRN can be issued. Let me point out here that we have had discussions with the Registrar General's Department, which is prepared to facilitate requests for birth certificates. The National Health Fund is responsible for processing the applications. That includes data processing, printing and distribution of your GOJ card. For the immediate future, persons already in possession of the NHF health card need not apply for a GOJ card. At every visit to a public health institution, cardholders should present their swipe cards. Where swipe machines are not in place, public health staff should use the NHF online database to access patient information to facilitate registration. The GOJ Health Card will facilitate easy and quicker registration, enhance patient management leading to better patient outcomes, the ability to easily fill prescriptions at any public pharmacy and drug serve across the island, tracking of medication to ensure that they are being used safely, especially in terms of quantity and mix, linkages with the introduction of the electronic patient administration system, EPAS, which will allow us to link health records to the card. Other benefits of the card include tracking of path beneficiaries to better ensure social protection for this vulnerable group. Looking ahead, further benefits will include the ability to properly plan using micro-level empirical data to inform policies and programs. Full rollout of the GOJ health card is being done over 18 months, with another six months targeted to iron out any remaining kinks. After that, the use of the card will become mandatory, except in cases of emergency. The Ministry of Health, achieving efficiency gains, better patient management and better patient outcomes for a healthier population. The government is establishing an entertainment registry as a central portal for listing Jamaican entertainment services and companies, including their key profiles and contact information. This will authenticate the legitimacy of entertainment practitioners and create greater economic benefits. How? The answers in this discussion. Thanks for joining us for another edition of Issues and Answers. I'm Ian Boyne. Today we talk about entertainment. We have with us the Minister of State with the responsibility for entertainment in the Ministry of Tourism and Entertainment, Mr. Damien Crawford. He'll be shedding light on a new entertainment registry and also rating in the entertainment industry. We thank you for your company as usual. Minister, good to have you thank on you the uh, show. Explain to us this concept of an entertainment registry. This is just another means of 
getting taxes from, <laughs> from entertainers. <laughs> well, that, is, that is one thing we had to be very clear to the entertainers, that while I'm working on a methodology to get the taxes from the entertainers, oh, yeah. all persons should pay taxes. Yes. Um, a registry could not be it. Okay. In fact, if I wanted to know who were entertainers, all I had to do was to get all the flyers that existed okay. and then tax them based on the flyers. Yes. In fact, um, a registry will then cause for a greater democracy, a democratic um, knowledge of, of all entertainers and therefore not have just a few known be all pressured right. for taxes. So the, the registry is to formalize the industry. It is to cause for entertainment to be repositioned as a business and not just an idling. Um, for right now, if somebody said to their parent, I want to be an artist, uh -huh. um, it is with, with chagrin that the parent, the mother will say, no, you need to go to school and mm -hmm. become a doctor. Mm -hmm. You can't just become a lawyer by saying I'm a lawyer. So we're saying that uh, you need a registry of entertainers and it have a multiplicity of benefit. Yes, the first is that um, it allows for greater movement within CARICOM, etc. One of the one of the excuses that are being used yes. now is we don't know if this person is an artist. Mm. And anybody can come up to Trinidad and say, I'm an artist. Good and boy. so therefore, this now will say this person is certified and recognized by government. And the EU also is facilitating so that benefit, that to, the entertainer. benefit to the entertainer for freedom of movement. Yeah. The other thing is for government benefits. Right now, for the first time, we have tools of trade for entertainment. Um, that used to be, for example, hotels could buy ACs and could buy beds without paying the necessary taxes at customs to encourage um, the, the, the hotel industry. Yes. Now we have tools of trade for entertainment. Oh, so a person yes. who is a producer can carry in his necessary equipment and actually I'm um, not paid the, the taxes, duty. the duty, mm. at, at, at thing. A person who is a sound system man can carry in his speaker and other equipment. A person who is doing lighting can carry in his lighting equipment. And so, so once, now, he's on, on this once he's on the registry, he has these benefits. He has access to the benefits. Uh -huh. Now, we know that there's a high level of bandulism in Jamaica. And so we have grandfathering in those who are established entertainment practitioners. New practitioners would take two years to qualify for the duty benefits. That you have to show commitment to the industry. That not being the case, a man want a computer and then just sign up that he is a, is a, is a sound system man mm -hmm. and carry the computer in. Or a man want to sell guitars and sign up that he has a band. So he has to now show commitment to, 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 to the industry. See the logic. Yes. Mm -hmm. so, so, so the registry also um, has that, 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 that particular benefit mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. Are there other benefits, subsidiary benefits to this registry? Yes, um, definitely. One, the registry also creates teeth. Um, for, for, for proper um, disciplined action. Indiscipline happens when there's no repercussion. Mm -hmm. And so, for example, persons will be able to lose points of their license and eventually not be licensed. So uh, a promoter, for example, who has not received an extension permit but choose to disturb the entire public, notwithstanding, once there's a report, he will then lose points and eventually not be able to be a promoter and not get a place of amusement license. Mm -hmm. And so what we're pushing for is an equilibrium position between those who want to eat from entertainment and those who want to sleep regardless of entertainment. Mm -hmm. And that gives a greater thief than you have to call the police and then the police have to choose to respond. You can simply make a complaint and then the promoter would have to defend um, why, why that was so. So it also have that coordinating benefit as well. Yes. Minister of State Damon Crawford explaining to us some of the mm -hmm. benefits of a new entertainment registry system, a system that will help entertainers themselves as well as help to position the entertainment uh, industry as a major sector in the uh, cultural industries uh, group. We take a break, but we'll be right back. If you're a registered member of the Jamaica Federation of Musicians or the Recording Industry of Jamaica, you may apply for a waiver of duty on the importation of music equipment. For more information on the Music Tools of Trade Incentive, click on the Tourism and Entertainment Ministry's website at mot.gov.jm or call the Ministry's Entertainment Division at 920-4926-30. Minister of State in the Ministry of Tourism and Entertainment, Damon Crawford, talking to us about the entertainment industry and about an important enter entertainment registry that is to be uh, established with a number of benefits to entertainers. This registry is not actually established. 
Yes, the it's, registry is now established. It's now um, established. You can it's register. Functional. It is functional. Yes. And uh, I was saying to you in the break that it, it also has the benefit of causing for a removal of the middleman or the bandulu who is claiming Explain. to be a representative of an artist, okay. yes, when he's not actually a representative. Well, that some, so many in Europe in particular, in the United States, have collected down payments on behalf of artists when they are not. In fact, in the newspaper two days ago, Buju Bantan, who's in jail, right. has been putting out that he is not represented by a particular individual in Trinidad yes. who is claiming to be Buju Bantan's representative yes. and possibly collecting for the first show out of prison. Yes. And so what this happens now, if a person is interested in Buju Bantan or Bounty Killer or, or Toots, he would go, to, he would go to the registry and see directly how to communicate, contact, and who the representatives are. Mm -hmm. And so you can go directly now to our artists. Because the last time I was in England, they were saying, a promoter came to me saying he prefers a soca act even though it draws less crowd because there's a greater certainty oh. and that uncertainty is partially in influenced by middlemen who claim to be representing artists and so the artist isn't turning up because he has received no down payment and the promoter is upset because he has made a down payment oh. and so the registry will also correct that, okay. that, that yes. problem yeah. so people within the entertainment industry itself have been asking for some mechanism like this People have been asking for a solution. And so when we went to the joint board with my team, we came with, with, with that solution, which, which occurs, for example, in Canada, they have a registry. In Australia, they have a registry. Even in Trinidad now, they have a registry of arts and artists. And so now we are going to put that registry. One of the problems is that entertainment and government was never intertwined, yes. um, partially because entertainment was from the lower classes yes. up and government was from the upper classes <laughs> yes, down. Yes. Um, now we have... Um, DJs who are from the upper class and we have government yes. people who are from the lower classes. So, <laughs> <laughs> so there's a, yes, there's yes. a greater coexistence yes. between entertainment yeah. and, 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 and... And there was traditionally been a suspicion of government by entertainers. I yes, mean, people feel and like vice versa. You're about to, you want something from me, you yes, know, and yes. if you the the wear medal... The entertainers then it's not going to be to my benefit. felt that the government was out to get them. That's right. And the government always blamed the entertainers for whatever negatives happen in the society. society yes. And so sometimes when people Mutual claim that suspicion. they see me at every event, um, I would much prefer to be sleeping. But um, <laughs> that interaction that I have, that's how I learn a lot of the things from them. Yes. I've been at studios, etc., understanding what their entertainment realities are and then trying to fabricate from my experience and information how I can solve, solve those issues. Ministry, how... Minister, how are you going to deal with the issue of the night noise, people not being able to sleep because, you know, entertainers wanting to have to eat a food and to put on the dances and so on? I know you yes. have talked about entertainment zones, but zones, seem to be zones a, in itself cannot be the answer. That's right. um, yeah. After 22,000 events that we gave a license for last year, 22,000 events? 22, events, just over 22,000, 16,000 did not rent a venue nor advertise on the radio. Mm -hmm. which suggests to me therefore that there were community events dependent on the community for support yes. and so having a zone kills 16,000 which Precisely. is the majority of those activities right. because then the person would have to then find a way to get to a zone which by definition must be far away right. from, from, from houses right. um, especially within the fact that we don't have public transportation in the times that persons are going yes. to events right. and so it also makes it, I, I say classes a lot of times, but I guess undemocratic because many persons could not access that reality. Yes. A zone will also, because of demand and supply, cause for a higher price for the venue. Yes. Because in this venue, there's a greater benefit you can stay until you want, mm -hmm. and therefore there'll be more people moving to that venue causing for the, the rental, and therefore putting out the smaller promoter mm -hmm. who can't afford. So while zones is a contributor to the solution, it is not the solution in and of itself. Mm -hmm. um, there's other realities for zones as well, such as what I call a C zone, like downtown Kingston, mm -hmm. for example, where we would then retrofit some of the parking lots, where we just screw in a pole, fence it around, and it becomes a venue. Yes. And so the downtown, which is a commercial center, yeah. has low levels of disturbance mm -hmm. because not many persons live within within the area. So, so that is also. But the registry also will have a benefit to that because oh. now there's repercussions. So a person who has not received an extension and choose out of indiscipline simply to just extend his own event, yes? Oh. The, 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 the complainant is not dependent only on the police to show up and lock it off. And many say you call a hundred times That's and the right. police don't show up. Now you can call and make a report that this person went over the time that was allotted. And, and we will publish those who got extensions so persons will know beforehand 
what event and what venue has extensions. And um, you'll make that report, and the person will lose points off his license. The promoter will lose some points off the license. And, could eventually and lose eventually lose, license lose his itself. license. Once he loses his license, he can't get a place of amusement license, which means he can't be a promoter anymore. Yeah, yeah. And so therefore, the, once there's indiscipline, is facilitated by no repercussions. Yeah. And so therefore, the register creates an uh, easier methodology for repercussion for, for, for yes. promoters who, who violate that, that. Because while it is that I don't believe that it is, it is correct that the person who works from nine to five, mm. um, uh, disadvantage the person who works from five to nine. Yes. Um, it, it, it is equally vice versa. Reverse unfairness is not fairness. And so we want a methodology that both the nine to five and the five to nine can, can, can coexist. And the, and the cultural disposition to say that is their idling is not true. Mm -hmm. The person who is the promoter is mm -hmm. not idling. Mm -hmm. The person who is at the bar is not idling. Yes. The person who is running the taxi, the person who is at the security um, is not idling. And the many persons who work at Red Stripe who depend on events for consumption. Mm -hmm. um, so there's an indirect benefit mm -hmm. as well to that. And so therefore, we, we also say that they're, 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 they, must go, they have to go to work. Not all of us are formally employed. Mm. And so the man who is what I call informally employed, looking scrap metal, yeah. he doesn't need to work nine o wake up 9 o'clock. Mm -hmm. He impossibly wake up 6 p.m. Yeah. So, so therefore, we must understand that this but is an industry. But shouldn't interfere with the right it shouldn't interfere to with the right to sleep for the 9 o'clock man. That's right. But the 9 o'clock man shouldn't interfere with the right to work. No, as long as for the, is not impacted. And so therefore, we want a system. Yes. If it's even Saturdays only. That can't. Um, that, 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 but now we have every day. Yes. <laughs> you can't. So you that's can't. regulated. Yes. Briefly, Minister, because time is going. You're also working on a rating system. Yes. Explain that. Similar to what happens with movies. Um, what we want to do is to have the unintended exposure. We want to stop unintended exposure. Uh -huh. And so I'm not here to be a moral um, implementer by law, yes. um, to use laws to, to force morality. What I'm saying is a person who don't want to be exposed um, should not be exposed, and a person should have a decision on his child's behalf I if he should, should or should not be exposed. And so an event like Sting, for example, mm -hmm. will be rated R, and yes. is a pre pre promotion yes. that thing is of this and it would include okay. that. However, another event might be rated G mm -hmm. because artists have that ability. Bounty Killer now performs sometimes as Rodney Price. That's right. And it's a clean performance. Yes. But in Bounty Killer, it's a raw performance. Yes. And so the promoter is the person who prior to the event will rate the event. Okay. He will suggest a rating from a matrix and if he violates that rating, he also loses points. And the rating, the, 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 everybody within his employ is in his control. And so he has to ensure that the selector understands what rating he suggested okay. and by extension what is acceptable and what is unacceptable. Okay. Parents will also then be capable to say Good. that twisted spirits would include yes. and I don't want my child Good. or I do. Good. Thank you, Minister. Mm -hmm. Minister of State in the Ministry of Tourism and Entertainment, Damon Crawford, uh, talking R and R with us. Um, registry and uh, rating. We thank you for your company. Next week, I'll be back. Until then, Ian Bourne wishing you a pleasant day. There is a war of influence seeking to have dominance over the lives of our children. Parents and guardians must prepare to win this battle to protect the children from the negative influences that bombard their minds each day. These may come straight up or subliminal through advertisements, music, movies, and other media. Parents must ensure that their children are only exposed to age-appropriate information and should set high standards, stressing good moral values. A clear standard of right and wrong will empower children to make the best personal and moral choices. Build a bond of trust between you and your child so he or she will respect your opinions and have conversations that will help your child think critically about all forms of media. They'll be curious, but when parents apply strong and solid influence on their children, they will not sway from doing the right things, regardless of what the world and their peers are engaged in. Take a stand and protect your child from negative influences.
This is where we leave you for this edition of Jamaica Magazine. Thanks for watching. And don't forget, we value your feedback. So drop us a line. Send an email to jamaicamagazine at jis.gov.jm. You may also follow us on Twitter at JIS News. On behalf of the team here at the JIS, I'm Theodore Henry, wishing you a productive week. This has been a production of the Jamaica Information Service, the voice of Jamaica. Thank you.